So today, it's a nice sunny afternoon, and I'm supposed to be interviewing Dr. Brown, asking her the five questions, you know? Doing little five questions with Grammy Brown, but being that the doctor that she is, <laughs> she flipped it on me. So it's going to be Dr. Brown asking Grammy Brown five questions. So yeah, we're going to start. Um, Dr. Brown, can I ask you one question? Yes, you can. <laughs> How are you doing today? <laughs> Fine, thank you. So Dr. Bowen is going to ask me five questions, um, and this all relates to my book, Learning the Business of Life, which i got to put my plug in. It's available on Amazon. It's available on GrammyBrown.com, and it's available in bookstores all over St. Martin and on Central Station from Emmeline Coutard in Jeans. So Dr. Brown, once again, good afternoon, and yeah, shoot away. <laughs> All righty. Okay, thinking back to your childhood, what kind of child were you at six or seven years? And what did you dream of becoming when you grew up? Um, okay, so as far back as I can remember, five, six, I think I wanted to be a mailman. Um, I, I had an uncle. And he, he had a male, he was a mailman. And he had this uniform, it was kind of like, like a brown khaki-ish with uh, a red stripe going down on the side of the pants. I don't know, I just kind of liked them. I'm like, yeah, I want to I wanna do that when I grow up. I want to be a mailman. Um, so that's, that's from about that age. <laughs> okay, so it was it just because of your uncle, just seeing how he's dressed? Yeah, I think the uniform kind of hooked me, and he was like a tall, slender man. I was a kind of a slender kid. I kind of saw myself in him somewhat at that age and said, yeah, it will be cool to be a male man. Okay. All right. Fast forward now to your late teens and early adulthood. Who were you during that time? Um, in my early teens... I was a pretty I was an excited kid. I loved wrestling. I loved a lot of TV. I got into TV. In wrestling, my heroes was Rocky Johnson. Um, he, was, he, he was definitely my, um, the one I looked at the most because he was like, again, tall, slender man. He had a lot of style, a lot of swagger, and I saw myself in him. Um, and then by the time I was 12, I got tuned to business. So then I wanted to be a businessman. But I think just before that, I think I gravitated to police officer. Um, but then by the time I was 12, it was more a business thing, a manager, a businessman that I wanted to be. And by 14, I wanted to be a soldier. Um, I had a cousin. He was in the United States Army. And I saw him in uniform with full gear, and I thought, yeah, I want to be a soldier, which I did join the Marines uh, when I was 22. So that, that actually came about. And in terms of police, I was accepted in the police academy, and, but I didn't end up going because I went into business for myself um, at 23. So in my late teens, definitely... Uh, businessman, manager, um, so police officer, soldier. And what aspirations did you start pursuing? Um, I started pursuing um, business and entrepreneurship early. Um, in my book, I talk about the five ways to increase your chances of success that I learned at around the age of 16. And one of those ways was you finish high school and then you go out in the real world, you learn to do as many different things as you can. And between the one you love the most and the one you do the best, you make, you put them together, you make a business and you pursue that. You work hard, save your, save and retire early. And that's the one I started pursuing. So by 17, I left home. Um, went out in the real world, and I started doing different jobs. I worked as a carpenter. I worked as a, as a, as a waiter, busboy, bar boy, bartender, casino dealer. 
And then by 23, I really went on to full entrepreneurship. And that's where I stayed. Okay, thank you. And now that you have become an entrepreneur, are you living out your dream? Or, and I guess I'm just saying this, um, is it just part of a job? And I know the answer, but let everyone know your answer. I am living my dream. I am, I am now retired. Um, as you can see, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an old, young-looking man. <laughs> but no, I'm retired, so I, I do cooking, I do, I do hiking, I, um, I write books. Um, I'm going to write three books this year. Um, my first book was Learning the Business of Life. I'm mentoring the next generation, trying to inspire them. I'm doing mentorship for entrepreneurs. Um, so I am living my dream. And you know what they say, if you're doing what you love to do, you never work a day in your life. So this is not work for me. This is all me living my life and my dream. Okay, so if you were a teenager in 2024, what do you imagine you would be dreaming about or striving to achieve? So if I was a teenager now, man, I think it would be really scary. <laughs> Explain why. I'll probably, um, within the five ways um, of increasing your chances to succeed, if I was still wanting to aspire to be an entrepreneur, I definitely would not go to college because I think that would be a waste of four years. In those four years, I would be able to go out in the real world and learn all the things that I want to do as an entrepreneur. So in four years, I'll be much more experienced and learn how the real world works around them. Um, or maybe being a teenager now, I might have been inclined to go to college and pursue maybe a career. Uh, it's hard to say because when I was a teenager, there wasn't a big push for college. It was more a push to finish high school. Um, and of the five ways that I, that I write in my book, only two of them were a path to college. Um, but you'll have to buy my book to know all five ways. So it's hard to say what I would have pursued. Um, but if I had to pick two, I would say probably the two easiest ones, military, service, and law enforcement. I, th I think those would be the two I would be able to narrow it down into if I was a teenager now, looking forward. So you're still saying, so you talked about college and not going to college, so education and not. And of course, when we think about it back then, and as you mentioned in your book, that was not, finishing college was not a big thing. What are your intakes on that right now? It depends on what you, where you want to go. If, if, if you're going towards a career, a job, you want to climb the, climb the corporate structure and uh, you, 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 you have a specific um, uh, profession you want to be in, college will most definitely be the way to go. But if you want to be an entrepreneur, I would say definitely, hands down, finish high school. And if you already know what area of entrepreneurship you want to go into, jump right into it after high school. Don't spend four years in college learning academics that you're not going to use and need as an entrepreneur. Okay, I wanted to go back on the high school, completing high school, going college, or just even completing high school. And I want to talk a little bit about that because I know I am, as a teacher, I know that there are some students who believe that they don't even have to go to high school, they don't have to complete high school, and I'm talking about my elementary students, they don't have to complete high school, just the fact that they want to be a business owner. And they think that it's useless or, or not even worth the time completing high school or going to college. And of course, what happens, they end up not doing anything. So drop out of school, drop out of high school, and don't do anything. So what's your intake or what would you tell students at that age? I would definitely tell students to finish high school. 
In my book, in all five ways, you complete high school. Unfortunately, I did not complete high school myself. <laughs> um, but after sixth grade, I went to a trade school. I think now it's called, um, what, what's the name it's called? It's called, uh, it's not called a trade school anymore. It's called a vocational school. So, and I went to a vocational school that there, there was only two trades at the time. There was masonry and carpentry. So that would place me um, directly into the construction field. And it was a three-year program. I did two years, and then I dropped out um, for different reasons. However, things worked out for me. And there's no sign that it won't work out for someone else, or it will. But my mind was already tuned for business from the age of 12 coming forward. So I think because of the time that I grew up, which was the the late 70s, you know, early, mid 80s, it was different than now. Now, I would tell any kid, finish high school. Finish high school. Um, if you don't want to go to co college and you have a desire for a skill, whether it's plumbing, electrical, carpentry, masonry, welding, you know, air can conditioning, um, go to a vocational school because then you get your skill set because you have to do something, right? Being an entrepreneur, you still have a skill, a talent, and then you pursue that um, amongst various other things. But you have to learn skills. You have to have skills. And once you have those, again, you pursue your dreams. And if you're focused, dedicated, there's a saying, we achieve what we commit to. If you commit yourself to what you're trying to achieve and you have the, 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 the understanding of how the world works and, and how to go about achieving the goals that you have, that's the basis of everything. But don't quit primary school and definitely don't quit high, high school. Don't quit high school. Finish high school. And if you want to be an entrepreneur, then pursue those skills and those aspirations. Okay, I have another question for you. What about for children who do not know what they want to be? Because, you know, there are several students, several children, and even we have, like, younger ages, but even the older ones, they can be 18 years old or even 16, and some of them still do not know what they want to be when they grow up. So how would you um, mm. tackle something like that? I would say parents should definitely talk to their kids from a young age and ask them what they want to be, right? Because as, as children, we see ourselves in other people, right? Whether it's our school teacher, the mailman, um, dad, mom, uncles. But you have to ask the question. As time goes on, it's going to change. It's going to change every year, every two years, which is okay. But at least it gets your child mind thinking and dreaming and, and, and being inspired as they look at people. Um, a lot of kids now are only inspired by celebrities or people they see on the internet. But there is so many people that live next door, people that you see every day that you can also aspire to be. But until you ask a child a question, the child is not thinking about the answer. So any answer you want, you must ask the question. Ask the question. If you're 18 and you don't know what to do, think about what it is you enjoy doing. Think about what it is you're good at. Because that's what I chose initially. I went out in the real world. I learned to do a lot of different things. And between the one I was good at and the one that I love, I put them together and I opened businesses. And I pursued entrepreneurship from the age of 23. So imagine, I dropped out of school at 16. I had various jobs for six, six years, seven years. And by the time I was 23, I had the opportunity and made a decision to go as a, as a full-time entrepreneur 100%. So even though I had the dream and the aspiration and my mind was already tuned, it still took me seven years to really make that big step to say, got it, this is it, and I never look back. Um, 
And I was able to retire at the age of 29. But again, the luck of the draw, the run. And because that happened then, it's not the same time frame and the world has already changed. So finish high school, focus on what you're good at, what you love, what you aspire to do and work hard towards doing it where you can earn from it. Okay. All right. So now picture yourself in a room with children and young adults. And they are all looking at you, knowing you, the author of Learn the Business of Life, and you're just about to leave the room. Give me two sentences. Not, I wouldn't take only a word, but I'd like two sentences of what will you leave with them. Just before you leave the room, what would you tell these, these young adults, so six to 19 year old? Um, what would you tell them? I want you first to tell me someday you will tell the six-year-old because, of course, what you will tell a six-year-old, you will not tell a 19-year-old. So what would you tell the, that age group, so those elementary ages, so six to 12, what would you tell that group? Um, dream big and imagine yourself living out your dream, whatever that dream is, and then pursue it. Okay. And then now our 12 to 19 year olds. And now think about it that these, they don't know what they want to do. They don't think that they can own a business. They're not really want to go. They don't think that they're good enough to do anything. What would you tell that group? Between the thing that you're good at and the thing that you love to do, put them together and pursue that. Because you have to do something. Life is not free. You have to earn a living and you have to pay for the life you want to live. So if you, if you don't have a career goal, I will always point someone to military service. I will say go to a vocational school and learn a skill. It's between a skill, trade, talent, and pursue that, work hard, save, live well. Any last words you want to leave with your viewers? The only limits in business and life is your imagination and determination to succeed. Once you have the goal, once you have the aspiration that you want to be, um, you have to make that your primary objective. And once you have that primary objective, stop at nothing and for no one to fulfill that objective.